All right, if you've got your Bibles, take your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11 this morning. Y'all heard about the guy that got up one morning, he asked his wife, fix him some coffee, and she said, no, honey, I'm not fixing the coffee. He said, that's your job. He said, what do you mean that's my job? She said, it's in the Bible. He said, where is it in the Bible? She said, it says Hebrews. <clears throat> Amen. All right. All right. Hebrews chapter number 11. I want you to read one verse with me in Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. The Bible said, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. I want to preach on this thought this morning, on Noah, the impact of faith. The impact of faith. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Ask the Lord to help us this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Michael, if you would, Brother Michael Sands, to lead us in prayer and ask the Lord to help us. Amen and amen. All right, thank you. Uh, Noah, the impact of faith. I'm reminded uh, when I read about Noah here in Hebrews chapter number 11, I'm reminded that Jesus taught us that when he returns to this earth that it will be as it was in the days of Noah. He said in Matthew chapter 24, uh, verses 37 through 39, he said, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You say, how was it when they, the, the days of Noah? Well, the Bible said they were eating, they were drinking, they're marrying and they were giving in marriage. Genesis 6, 5 said this, that God, excuse me, that God saw the wickedness of man, that it was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Sounds a whole lot like today, does it not? You look on the television, you uh, look throughout uh, our society. It used to be you had to look at the big cities, but you ain't got to look out your window very far uh, before you see the wickedness all around us today. But I'm also reminded that in the midst of such perversion that, that Noah lived in and the wicked days in which he lived when the, the imagination of man's thoughts and the, of his hearts were only evil continually, I'm reminded that in the midst of all of those uh, wicked things and all of those evil thoughts and all of that demonic activity that was taking place in Noah's days, I am also reminded that there was a man who walked with God. And there was a man who found grace in the eyes of the Lord. His name was Noah. In Genesis 6 to 8, the Bible said, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And his faith made an impact in his day. His faith made an impact in his day. I say this, Noah was a faithful man of faith in a fallen, fearful world. That's what he was. Listen, no, all around Noah, he had every excuse. He could have said, well, society has pressed on me. They try to tell everybody, you know, like if you're a sodomite, it's somebody else's fault. Or if you're a drunk, it's somebody else's fault. Or if somebody abuses a child, well, it was their fault. No, look up in here. If you made a choice to do it, it's your fault. You got a will, you got a choice. You may have been influenced and impacted by others, but nobody held a gun to your head and made you get up and come to church this morning. Yeah, man. Noah made a choice. Noah made his own decision that though the whole world was in darkness, though the whole world was uh, just being oppressed and, and driven by depravity and wickedness, Noah walked with God. Noah was a man who trusted God. Thank God for Noah's. Uh, listen, the world today needs some men. Matter of fact, not just men. The world needs some Christians who will have faith and be faithful in the midst of the perversion and the wickedness that's all around us. 
Now, I know I'm preaching to the choir this morning. I know cream of the crop, Sunday morning and all that. But look up in here. Hey, listen, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to turn on. You, listen, you can turn on any news channel today and see that they are parading and promoting wickedness all around us. Matter of fact, they think we're the haters and we're the oddballs because we still stand with the Word of God and because we still stand on thus saith the Lord and we still call sin, sin, and abomination, abomination. So they think we're the wackos and we're the haters. I don't hate anybody. God don't hate anybody. God loves them. But He is angry with the wicked every day. Yeah, man. Preaching time, amen. Hey, look up in here in the middle, in the middle of it all, in the middle of it all, there was a man named Noah who was walking with God. There was a man with, uh, listen, with, with faith in God. There was a man who was faithful to his wife. There was a man who was faithful to the call of God. There was a man who was faithful in the midst of a fallen, fearful world while everybody else was eating, drinking, marrying, and giving and marrying. They're caught up in their day to day life. Noah was one who was walking with God. That's what we need today. You know, the polls say this. The polls say that if the children lead the way in commitment to church, that 3.5% of families will follow. If mom leads the way to church, 17% of the families will follow. But if dad leads the way, 93% of families will follow. Hey, daddy, I would say you've got a responsibility. They say this, another poll said this, that if mom attended church, 15% of the children will. If dad attends church, only dad, 55% of the children will. But if both mom and dad would attend church, 72% of the children would. I'm telling you, it makes a difference, mom and dad. We come to Noah, we think about Noah walking by faith and, and living for God. And the Christian life is a life of faith. We're saved by grace through faith. We're justified by faith. We live and walk by faith. Someone has said that every failure in the Christian life is a prayer, prayer failure. But I believe it would be safe for us to say this morning that every failure in the Christian life is a faith failure. A lack of living by faith can cripple and hinder an individual's walk with God. A lack of faith, uh, listen, uh, can cripple and hinder a family. A lack of faith and trusting God can cr cripple a growth and, a, and the ministry of a church. However, when we live by faith and trust God and obey God, we'll have a radical impact uh, uh, on the world all around us in which we live. Hebrews chapter number 11 is full of the, it's the hall of faith. From the Old Testament of people who please God and who walk with God. And the only way that they please God is by faith. Hebrews eleven six. 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. They're witnesses. They are, they are testimonies to you and I. They are telling us that and showing us that you can live by faith. And, and that living by faith is the only way to please God. You go back to chapter number 10, verse 35 through 39. He's giving us a warning. He's talking about those who were, who were being tempted to turn back and to turn from their faith. And there's a warning there, an admonition not to give up our faith. But the, he said, you have need of patience. He said, you be patiently enduring and believe in God for the promise. And God's going to give you the promise one day. The word faith has the idea of a persuasion, a belief, a credence, a, a moral conviction. It's especially speaking when you use in the Bible of reliance upon Christ for salvation. Just simply, we talk about faith, we talk about trust, belief. Simply put, we can say this, faith is believing God. Faith is believing God. By faith, Noah. What, what did Noah do? Noah believed God. Verse 6 told us that what we must believe is that He is. That's that, that God is, that He exists, that He's in control. And not only that He is... But he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Can I, can I just remind you this morning that faith and flesh look in different directions. Now the flesh wants to see what we can do. And the flesh wants to see what we need to figure out. But flesh, flesh is wrong. Flesh looks at what we can do. Flesh looks at what's possible according to physics. Flesh looks at what's possible according to biology. But faith looks at what is impossible, knowing that the God of heaven can make all things possible with Him. Flesh and faith look in different directions, but faith and flesh lead to different destinations. 
You try to work it out, you'll fail. You try to trust God and you put your faith in God, God will take care of you. God will save you if you put your faith in Him. Amen. God will meet your needs if you take care of Him. I didn't say God make you rich and some kind of playboy in a palace in Houston, Texas. What I'm saying is God knows how to take care of His own if you'll trust Him. Hebrews chapter 2, or Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, said, Behold, the soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. Romans 1, 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Galatians 1, or 3, verse 11. But uh, that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident the just shall live by faith. I'm telling you this morning, the Christian, Christian life is a life of faith. Amen. Hebrews eleven seven introduces us to this character, Noah. You can read about him in Genesis chapter 6 through 9. But it's one verse here in Hebrews 11 in the whole roll call of faith. The hall of faith, Noah, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Noah. The impact of faith. A close look at the life of Noah would teach you and I that, listen, that, that he was given revelation. And with re revelation, he had responsibility by God. And he responded in a positive, obedient manner. His obedience led to his deliverance. A closer look at his life. Noah, listen, not only did it impact his own life greatly, but his faith had a tremendous impact on his family as well. You hear what I said, Dad? Not only did his faith impact his life, but his faith impacted his family greatly as well. And I want you to consider, and I, I, I listen, I want you to get the thrust of this this morning. I want you to consider the impact of faith. Let me just say this. Your faith not only determines whether you go to heaven or hell, and whether you please God with your life, but it could have some influence and some impact on the person sitting beside you or the person growing up in your house. Now, you can't trust God for somebody. You can't get saved for nobody. But your life and your consistency and your faithfulness, listen, will have a great impact on those around you. And, Daddy, you'll have no greater impact, and I'm preaching to myself, you'll have no greater impact on, on, impact on anybody in this world than you do the children growing up under your roof. Amen. That's enough to put us all on the altar. I want you to consider Noah's faith and the impact it had on those around him. Number one, think about the test of his faith. The test of his faith. Noah was put to the test. We have in Genesis 6, 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But in Genesis chapter number 6, God had come to Noah, told him how wicked it was, how evil everybody's thoughts was, and how everything was going downhill, and it was away from what God had intended. And God said, here's what I'm going to do, Noah. He said, I'm going to destroy the whole earth. I'm going to bring a flood, and I'm going to kill them all. I'm going to wipe them out. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Here's the test, here's the test of Noah's faith that came by the revelation of God's word. You go back and read Genesis chapter number 6. Nobody knew what was going on, but God came and told Noah, I'm going to send a flood. I'm going to destroy the earth. The test involved the communication of, of this revelation of his faith. Watch this. Communication was this. He was being warned of God. Being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Here was a righteous, God-fearing man who has now given instructions of the warning of the judgment from God that was to come. Can I tell you, listen, God's not going to judge the earth again with the flood. Next time it's going to be fire. Everybody, I heard somebody, I heard an advertisement for a local church. I won't tell you it was a Moravian church somewhere not far from here. Uh, but listen, I heard the advertisement. They said, we're not a hell fire. We're not one of them fire-breathing preachers. Look up in here. You need a fire-breathing preacher. You need somebody to tell you that there's a heaven to gain, but there's a hell to shun. Listen, there is wrath of God. And I'm telling you, listen, if you're not saved, the wrath of God abides on you. And listen, if you're not saved when you die, you're going to hell. And you're going to wind up in a lake of fire forever. That's not popular, but it's still the Bible. And, and listen, the test of Noah's faith came when he was given revelation from God's word. 
Here, listen, he's being warned of God. Listen, it wasn't the Reader's Digest. It wasn't CNN, praise God. It wasn't even Fox News. It was the Word of God that was being warned of God. He had some advice. He'd had a consultation. He'd been admonished. He'd been revealed something from God Almighty. Noah, here, here's what God told Noah. God told Noah build an ark because God was going to send a flood and judge the earth. Y'all, y'all think that's simple because y'all re- already read the Bible. Y'all seen it rain. But before you can have faith, you've got to have revelation of something to have faith in. Hey, no, I'm going to send a flood. It's going to rain. I'm going to destroy the earth, build an ark. Can you imagine, Noah, what's rain? What you talking about, a flood? What's an ark? God is relaying to him and telling him of the judgment that to come. Hey, listen, and you and I are given truth by God, and as we are, and we are responsible to submit to his plan and his purpose. We're not, listen, we're not responsible to figure it out. We're not responsible to sit down with a formula and decide if it's going to work. Simply put, God said, listen, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, or else there's going to be judgment. Listen, there's going to be hell. You're going to perish. You can't figure it out. You, you just got to take it for what the Bible says. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We can go back to Genesis chapter number 6, and we can find out in Genesis 6, 13, God told Noah of the condemnation that was coming upon mankind. He told him about uh, the flood. He told him about the consolation. He told him to build an ark. Somebody say amen. He told him about the construction in verses 15 and 16. That was the detail. God told Noah how to build the ark. He told him what to build it out of. He told him, listen, how long to build it, how wide to build it, how tall to build it, what to do to it. He told him to pitch it within and without. God gave him all the details of the construction of the ark. God revealed to him the comfort. He gave him the promise of his word, his covenant. God told him, he said, I'm, you're going to build this ark? He said, I'm going to let you get in. You and your family is going to get in. Y'all going to be saved. Listen, when Noah was given this warning from God, he didn't listen to the multitude of mockers. Can you just imagine in Noah's day? Can you, could you imagine Nobody would seen it rain. Nobody had an ark. It wasn't like today. You can, you can go up and down the road. Everybody got a bass boat. Right? You see a pontoon boat, a john boat. There's boats everywhere. Because y'all know where the river is. Y'all know where the lake is. Right? It wasn't like that in Noah's day. There wasn't yachts sitting around. He wasn't on the coastline. Here he is out there in the Middle East. And God said, hey, it's going to rain. It's going to be a flood. Build an ark. Here he's got this massive structure laid out. God says, this is what I want you to build. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to build. Can you imagine Noah? Here he goes out there. Him and he, Hey, thank God his boys, Ham, Shem, J. Fit, they go out there. They got their saws. Maybe they got a mule or a cow. I don't know what they got. They got some kind of animal, hopefully, out there helping. And they go to work. I mean, they clearing land. I, I, hey, listen, they cutting trees. Gopher wood. Hey, man, let's get some gopher wood. They out there. Hey, let, let's cut some wood. They're out there, and imagine what the people think come by. Hey, no, what y'all doing? We're building an ark. What's an ark? It's a boat. It's going to float. Float on what? The dirt? No, it's going to rain. God said it's going to rain, and it's going to flood. It's going to destroy the earth. God told me to build this ark. He told me what to build it out of, so it'll float. And last, he told me how long, how tall, how big. Noah, you done lost your mind. Hey, do they think you're crazy this morning? Do you know that, listen, the, 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 the percentage of, of churchgoers in America is dropping by the day? Now, I'm not talking about saved people. I'm talking about churchgoers. People who say they even believe in God, it's dropping day by day. And I promise you, hey, I promise you, uh, listen, on the authority of God's word this morning, I will promise you that the people out there in the world, hey, I promise you CNN thinks you're crazy for sitting here this morning on a Sunday morning when you could be sitting at the beach or sitting on a, on a lake somewhere. Listen, week after week you could be somewhere. Hey, but you're sitting in church giving money and letting some guy holler at you. Somebody say Amen. 
I might not get past my introduction, hey, but y'all hold on. Noah was giving this warning, but listen, as the mockers came by, he didn't listen to the multitude of mockers. And, and the Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot about the mocking, but you can just imagine how they're mocking you, how they're laughing at us. Look up in here. This world's so wicked, they think Donald Trump was radical. They ain't seen a Bible thumper yet. Y'all all right? It's Father's Day, it's 2022, I voted for Donald Trump, I'll vote for him again tomorrow if he runs. Look up in here, I ain't telling you what to do, but that's who I voted for. But watch this now, I think he's a compromiser, I think he's liberal, I think he's a heathen. I agree with his policies, some of them, thank God. I agree with $2 gas. And by the way, he told y'all what was going to happen. Y'all dummies voted for him anyway. Put that on the World Wide Web. Hey, man, hey, watch this now. They think, they think he's crazy. What do you think they think about us independent, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptists? I'm t- look up in here. I want to encourage y'all this morning. We are, we are like, a, you're talking about a remnant. We are a minute fraction of the remnant. <laughs> hey, here's, here's what Noah was, he wasn't listening to the mockers, he's listening to the master. That's what you're going to have to learn to do if you're going to please him. And walk, you're going to have to learn to walk with the master. Listen to the master. Flesh and faith look in two different directions. Listen, and listen, they're hearing two different voices. So there is the, uh, what did I call that? The communication of the revelation, his faith. And then there's the conception or the realization of his faith. He said he's being warned of God of things not seen as yet. Things not seen as yet. So he's warned of something that he'd never witnessed, that he'd never seen. And this was his test. Here's Noah's test. Noah, you're going to believe God or not? Faith doesn't know all the details. Noah was revealed light of things that he'd not seen yet, nor did he understand them. I don't believe that I don't believe God painted a picture and said, Noah, here's what it's gonna look like. God just said, Noah, it's gonna rain, it's gonna flood, you build an ark, everything's gonna be all right. But I'm gonna judge the earth, I'm gonna destroy the earth. You know what Hebrews 11 1 said? It said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Watch this. Not only do flesh and faith look in different directions, but flesh sees what faith sees what flesh cannot see. Noah heard God speak. Noah said it doesn't matter what the world's doing. doesn't matter what kind of party they're having. doesn't matter how they're married and giving in marriage, eating and drinking, and all these th- activities they're going through. doesn't matter how wicked it is. God spoke. I'm going to obey God. By faith, listen, by faith in God's word, we can see and we can understand what the world without faith cannot see. That's why you're here this morning. Amen. That's why you are. That's why you believe. That's why you behave the way you do. It's not because you got it all figured out. It's because you're simply, listen, you can say you're crazy enough, but hey, I could say you're smart enough just to take God at his word and believe God's word. The judgment's coming. It's time to get ready. It's time to prepare to meet thy God. Amen. Faith doesn't figure it out. Faith trusts. Those with, listen, those with no faith will never understand the revelation of God. You hear people all the time, well, I don't understand the Bible. It's because you don't believe it. A natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. Hey, Amen. You, you're not going to understand this book until you get to know the author. If you're not willing to believe him, he's not going to tell you all his secrets. Hey, Amen. When God desires to reveal something, it's faith that's going to see it. When God, when God shows you something, how many times have you ever been reading the Bible and you say, I ain't never saw that before? You know why? It's because you believe God and as you read, he reveals things to you and he shows you things. He didn't write something new. You just saw it afresh and new. Your faith is growing. He's talking about the test of his faith. Hey, Noah. No, listen, Noah already found grace in the eyes of the Lord, right? Y'all with me? Noah's already walking with God. But Noah, I'm going to put your faith to the test. Noah, floods come and build an ark. Test. Test of his faith. Your faith will be tested, Daddy. Your faith in this world will be tested. 
You're going to stand for Jesus. You're going to stand up for the Word of God. You're going to stand for what's right. You're going to be faithful. You're going to be in church. You're going to raise your family in church. You're going to do right. But if you got a test, Noah had a test, but then he had a testimony of his faith. Watch this, the testimony. You can't have a testimony without going through the test. The testimony of Noah's faith is that he trusted God, he obeyed God, despite what the circumstances may have been. He didn't say, God, uh, I trust you if. No, God said do this, and Noah did it. The Bible said he did everything that God commanded him to do. And his faith, his faith, here's his testimony, Noah's faith was seen, was manifested in his obedience. His obedience was not his faith. His obedience was manifestation or proof of his faith. You see the motivation of his faith. Watch this. The Bible said he was moved with fear. Moved with fear. It wasn't that he was just scared to death, but this, this idea of fear has the idea, it does have the idea of to act cautiously and circumspectly, but it has the idea of it to be in reverence or to stand in awe. This, this is a healthy fear of God and, and true piety and reverence of the God of heaven. That when God spoke to Noah and when God came to Noah and spoke, God, hey, Noah had enough sense to fear God, to reverence God, and to, and to be in awe. The Bible said he was moved with fear. I tell you what we've lost in our day, 2022, across our country is a healthy fear of God. And you see it in the churches. That's why they come in churches dressed like a bunch of hoodlums. That's why they come in churches singing rock music. That's why they come in churches with their smoke machines and their light show. And they don't care about what the Word of God is. No fear of God. That's why they live the way they do. That's why, that's why they treat people the way they do. That's why they act the way they do. No fear of God. That's why you can't get people to bow their head and pray. Can't even give thanks for their food because they have no fear of God. They have no reverence of God. That's why they come in church popping, chewing gum, pop, wearing hats, and, and, and just having a good old time like they're at the ball game because they have no fear of God. I'm telling you, you need a fear of God. You need to, listen, if you don't fear God, I'm telling you, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all instruction and wisdom. He's moved with fear. This, this fear is a healthy fear of God. Tr true faith doesn't question God. Listen, it doesn't question what God says, what God shows you. True faith believes it. Faith has, listen, faith has a conviction and a reliance in the Word of God that what God has revealed and what God has told will come to pass. I believe every, I believe every, I may not understand, listen, I may not ever understand everything in that Bible, but I believe everything in that Bible. And everything in there is going to come to pass just as sure as God said it was going. Now, I may not have all the details figured out on every little thing right now, but I believe it just like God said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. He don't need my proof. He don't need my vote. Noah had this conviction, and it motivated him to believe and to obey God. The Bible said he's moved with fear. That's the motivation of his faith. It's a healthy fear of God. Notice this. There's the foundation of this conviction was the person and the promises of God. I got a King James Bible. Thank God for it. I mean, I, I thank God for the inspired, infallible, inerrant, amen, preserved Word of God right here for the English-speaking people. And the King James Bible, not a new King James, not an English standard. Hey, look up here. Not a, I'm, I'm NIV negative and KJV positive, amen. Just want to remind y'all. Hey, look up in here. Noah didn't have that. Noah didn't have the old mama's black back book. What Noah had was God and God's Word. God spoke directly to him. You and I, he's not speaking to us audibly today per se, but he speaks to us right here through this Word of God. If the Bible was a person, it'd be Jesus. And if Jesus was a book, it'd be the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Some people say, well, you're just worshiping the Bible. You're worshiping the book. No, I'm worshiping the God of the book. Because the book reveals to me God. Jesus is God. The book, I feel like preaching. Hey, the book reveals Jesus to me. Jesus is the Bible in shoe leather. The foundation, the conviction of our belief and our faith is the person and the, the, the promises of God. I've got a Bible. Thank God I got a Bible this morning. I ain't got part of the Bible. I ain't got some of the Bible. Thank God I got a Bible. Yeah, man. Some people say, well, I believe that the King James Bible contains the Word of God. No, the King James Bible is the Word of God. Yeah, man. 
Some of y'all's gasping for air. I said the King James Bible, which will remind you, they're real good this morning. Hey, review. The King James Bible for the English speaking people is, you say, what about French speaking and, and, and Spanish speaking? I don't know about all that. Hey, but for the English speaking people, if you do your homework, it's the King James. Yep, and the fortitude of his conviction. Noah was a man. He was a just man. He was perfect in his generations, Genesis 6 9 says. She said, flesh, flesh can become discouraged, and faith will, uh, flesh will doubt God, but faith is dedicated, and faith believes, and faith obeys God. Consider, consider now the vessel that God instructed. Think about this once again. God instructed Noah to build this big vessel, this big ark, and, and consider what he told him to build, where he told him to build it, when he told him to build it. He'd have been ridiculed, he'd have been mocked, he'd have been teased, ain't no doubt about it. What kept him going? It was his conviction in the Word of God. It was his belief in what God said to him. His commitment was based on the Word of God. And it led him to be, to be obediently obeying God and pleasing God by his faith. Conviction. Do you, do you have an absolute conviction in the Word of God this morning? If you don't, your faith's going to falter. I think about not only the motivation of his faith, but I thought about the activation of his faith. He was moved with fear. Watch this. Prepared an ark. He didn't just move with fear and sit on a bench somewhere and say, well, God's going to judge the world. I believe it. No, he prepared an ark. That's what God told him to do. The word prepare has the idea to furnish, to prepare, to make ready, to build or to construct something, erect it and prepare it thoroughly. God said do this. I believe God told Noah everything he need to do. And Noah said, all right, God, I believe you. And God got quiet and Noah got to work. Noah went to work. Genesis 6, said, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Let me say this this morning. Flesh tries to manipulate. Flesh tries to figure things out. Flesh will rebel against God. But faith responds in obedient action to God. And his commands. True faith is active, by the way. True faith is active. A lot of people are sitting on the promises. Amen. They say, well, I'm just sitting on the promises. I shall not be moved. Hey, true faith doesn't sit soak and sour. True faith, listen, gets up and goes to work. True faith gets up and puts God's word in action, does what God says, obeys God. That does what God says. His faith was motivated by a healthy fear of God, and it was activated into immediate active obedience. Obedience. Remember that song we sing as a kid, obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Is that right? Obedience. O B. Y'all want me to spell it? I ain't going to do it. Watch this. Noah was warned. Noah prepared. Noah was given revelation. Noah responded. Noah was responsible for the truth that he was personally transmitted and given. And guess what's your response? You don't have to build an ark this morning. Your ark's already built. What you got to do is trust Jesus. Yeah, man. You got to put your faith in him, walk by faith, depend upon him. You and I are responsible for what we've been given, what we've been told by God individually through the Word of God. Listen, we got a lot of talk today about rights and privileges. We hear it in our country. Well, I got rights. I got rights. I got privileges. Who gave you a right and a privilege? I'll tell you something. Forget America. As Christians, Christian dads, we have a great responsibility. You say, what's that great responsibility? It starts with this. Trust and obey God. I like that song. It said, trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And I say the greatest, the greatest way you can help America is for you to personally trust and obey God. The greatest way you'll help your family is for you to trust and obey God. Look up in here. I want a Republican. I want Donald Trump. I want whoever. I want somebody to get the yo-hoo out and set up there now. Hey, but look up in here. The greatest thing that you can do to help your country is not to go vote. It's not to wave a flag. It's not to cause rats. Hey, the greatest way you can help your country is for you to have a real faith in God and trust God and make an impact and make a difference by seeing others come to Christ. The way to help this country is to see people get saved. When they get saved, they won't vote for a bunch of hey, lunatic heathens. What'd you put in my water, Brother Steve? Hey, man. 
Watch this. I'm telling you, you can hear a lot about rights. We got right, No, we got responsibilities. When's the last time you heard somebody join a church say, what's my responsibility? A lot of them come in and say, well, what's my right? What can y'all do for me? What do I have the right to do? What about what's your responsibility? You got an opportunity to serve God. Are you are you coming in and just riding the pine? And I, listen, if you're here, thank God. I'm glad you're here. But I want to motivate you. I want to encourage you. Hey, Noah, listen, Noah went to work. Noah's faith put him to serving God. Do something while you're here, amen. We got all eternity to count our, 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 our rewards. We got all eternity to enjoy uh, the, the uh, reaping of what we sow. But you've got one short life. And look up in here. The longer, the, listen, the longer I live, the shorter I realize that life really is on this earth. The brevity. Some of y'all is much older than I am. And y'all would say the same thing. It seemed like yesterday. Yesterday, I took my kids this past week. I took them up near Virginia where I grew up. I took them to some of the places that I, I went as a child. I took them to see some of their cousins. I showed them the river that I used to stay in just about all summer. We'd run up and down in the river. And I showed them, and I was thinking as I watched those little kids and my little girl running up and down that river, I was thinking about how it seemed like it was yesterday that I was knee high in, the, in, them, in, them, in them rapids. And gone, gone. The test, judgment's coming. The testimony, he obeyed. He trusted God. But watch this, the teaching of his faith. Get this, don't, don't miss this, this is it. The teaching of Noah's faith is that what he taught his family and how his faith impacted them. Think about his intention. The Bible said he moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. To the saving of, look, the obedient faith of Noah preserved the physical lives of his family. That was his intent. That's why he built the ark. God said, build it. This is how your family's going to get in. They're going to be saved. Noah said, I want to save my family. I'm building that ark. I trust God. Now, this may have resulted in them having saving faith as well, but it didn't guarantee that. Noah's, listen, Noah's act of faith and obedience to God set the stage for his wife and his children to have an opportunity to trust God personally. In faith, watch this, in faith, by faith, Noah built an ark to save them and deliver them physically so that God could save them and deliver them spiritually. Now you stop and think about and consider how many people in Noah's day saw the ark. How many people were on the earth and going back and forth, drinking, marry, and would have came by and saw the activity of, of Noah and his sons out there, but only eight got in when it was time to get in. Everyone, everyone was given the opportunity, and they made a decision whether to get in or not. God didn't put a, a no trespassing sign. God said, come. That's God's invitation down to the age is come. If you don't get saved today, it wasn't God that wouldn't let you. It was you that would not. The Bible doesn't say they could not. The Bible said they would not. Bunch of hyper-Calvinists. False doctrine. Look up in here. Hey, hey, the ark was big enough that anybody who wanted to get on could have got on. There's room at the cross for you. But all them people that walked by and heard no. By the way, I know he's out there building an ark. He's out there preaching. He's a preacher of righteousness. And only eight people got in. Noah's act of faith didn't guarantee his family would get saved, but it sure it greatly increased the possibilities. You saying, what are you saying, preacher? Here, here, think about this. Where would his family be had he not obeyed God? What would have happened to Ham, Sham, and Japheth? Say, Dad, hey, look up in here. You can't personally save your family, soul, but you can act in faith and obedience and set the stage for God to do it. What did the poll say? If Dad led the way, 93%. I'm saying this this morning. Your act of faith 
can put your family in a position and give them the opportunity for God to save them. My dad got saved when I was three years old. They got in church. My dad died. My mom stayed in church. My mom and dad got saved, praise God. And I grew up in church. And listen, I got saved years later because they went to church and got saved. What if, what if they hadn't got saved? Where would I be? Where would I be? Probably in hell. On the other hand, as much as your act of obedience and faith, trusting God can set the stage for them to get saved, watch this. Your disbelief and your disobedience can put them in a position where they may miss their opportunity that they would have had if you had acted in obedient faith. God knows my heart, one of my greatest fears and prayer. My, my prayer is this, that I want my children to be saved. I want my children to be saved. Lakin, Merrick, Maverick, they're not saved because they're a preacher's kids. Sometimes Lakin, she'll say, I'm saved already, and I have, I'm trying to explain to her, you're not saved yet, honey. You may be saved, but you're not saved. There's going to come a time God's going to speak to your heart. You're going to have to respond. You're going to have to trust him for yourself. Look up in here. God knows my heart. I don't want to do anything. I, I don't want to walk away from God. I don't want to backslide. I don't want to get away from God. I don't want to do anything that would hinder my children from being in a place, sitting in the church, hearing the preaching of God's Word, having a Sunday school teacher pour into them the Word of God so that God can reach in their heart and do a work, save their soul. I'm, listen, I've known many of people down through the years, and I'm not trying to be critical, but I've known many of men and women down through the years that got saved and was in church, had their family in church, and some little issue uh, got them twisted in a wad, and they got out of church. They didn't just switch churches. They got out of church altogether. Quit serving God. You say, well, they wasn't saved to start with. I don't know if they was or not. It's between them and God, but I know this. A lot of them people right today, their children will have nothing to do with church. You couldn't, get their, you couldn't get their children in church. Somebody said, well, you've given them hot dogs. You couldn't get some of these people in there with a, with a hot dog factory. Because, because mom and dad walked away years ago. They saw the inconsistency. You know, one of the hardest, one of the hard, listen, mom and dad, one of the hardest children you'll ever reach with the gospel in ever. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's not the children whose mom and daddy is, is down yonder in, a, in the bar somewhere. It's the children who grow up in a house with mom and daddy who say they love Jesus and come to church once in a while and then go home and live like junkyard dogs. Inconsistency. Noah was one who trusted God. He was faith, faithful. How many families down through the years have suffered physically, have suffered spiritually because of a dad who didn't respond to God in faith and obedience? I'm encouraging you, Dad. It's important. A dad, listen, a dad that is too caught up and too busy with the things in this life, you know, the eat and drink and marry and giving and marry, a dad that's caught up in the day-to-day -day life, that he's too caught up to do that. Listen, to, if he's too busy to serve God and too busy to be faithful, matter of fact, if you're too busy to be faithful to God, you're too busy. But the dad that's caught up in the things of this life, and he's not being faithful to God, he may prohibit his his own children from ever knowing and having eternal life in Christ. He said, preacher, prove it. Lot. The Bible said Lot was a just man. He vexed his righteous soul day to day, seeing and hearing. That's what Peter said. But you know Genesis chapter 19, when they went down there and told Lot, those angels went down there and told Lot to get out, judgment was coming. Lot got out. His sons-in-law was laughed at him. Don't, don't, his wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. We don't know what happened to his sons. The only, his two married daughters didn't leave. Two of his daughters left with him. And they was full of Sodom and Gomorrah themselves. I'm talking about a man who Lot went to heaven. You're going to see, by the way, if you go to heaven, you're going to see Lot, but you ain't going to see his family. What about David? 
What about David, a man after God's own heart, but he's sinned. And then you find him out on the hillside crying, Absalom, Absalom, my son, Absalom. His sin, hey, look up in here, his sin came home to roost. Hey, what's your intentions? What's your intentions, Daddy? Do you, do you want to save your house to the saving of his house? Do you have a desire to see your children saved? See your children, hey, do you have a desire to see your children escape and to flee the wrath to come? That's his intention, but watch this. Here's his impact. Here's the impact that he had. The saving of his house. He had the salvation of his seven. I said his seven. Noah's faith impacted his whole family. In such a way that all of them believed and were saved. The Bible, when God told them to come, Miss Noah came, Ham came, his wife came, Sham came, his wife came, Japheth came, his wife, hey, all eight of them. Noah, come in. You come. Bring your family. All right. Mama, children, God sits down to come in the ark. Okay, Daddy, here we go. Now, now watch this. 120 years, he's a preacher of righteousness. Y'all know, y'all know the story. If Noah had been a hypocrite for half the time, you think him three boys and their wives would have got on there with him? You crazy, Dad. No, my, Noah's faith had an impact. The, sa- the salvation of his seven. How many of your family is going to be impacted by your faith that's going to cause them to want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Now he won't listen, he won no other converts outside of his family, but he won his family. A lot of people say, well, if your church ain't doing this, you ain't getting this people saved. Look up in here. I'd like to see people saved every year. But I'm gonna be honest with y'all. If I go out of this world and the only three to get saved is my children, I'm going out of here a successful daddy. And I want to see everybody, look up in here, I want to see everybody that's here saved. I want to see everybody in this community saved. I want to see the world get saved. I want to do my part. But if I try to win them and lose them three, I feel like I failed. Now, God knows my heart and God knows their heart. I'm not trying to do God's business. But my first responsibility is to win my family. And if I live a, a double, inconsistent life, and my children say, oh, Dad, you're one thing at church, you're something else. Mm. Here, here's what the Bible says. In Acts 16, 31, that Philippian jailer come running in. He's about to kill himself now. He says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, watch this, and thy house. Now, that didn't mean his, that didn't mean his family's going to get saved just because he did, but it mean they had the possibility. Hey, look, hey, household salvation is a possibility. It's possible, Daddy, for you to get saved and for you to go home and tell your wife you got saved and tell your children you got saved and you to live in such a way that they want to get saved. And God will save them, amen. It's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. Watch this. There's the impact of his salvation of his seven. There's the condemnation of sinful society. The Bible said he condemned the world. They were too involved with their daily lives and activities to heed the warning. And here's Noah out there. He's sawing logs. He's preaching. I imagine he cuts a tree and says, y'all better get ready, judgment's coming, the floods are coming. He starts cutting boards, he's nailing that, and every log he saw, every blow of his hammer revealed his faith in God, and it also revealed the, the unbelief of the rest of the world. As he was preparing the ark, he was preaching the word. Vance Abner said this, he said, let it not be forgotten that a twice-born and spirit-filled Christian is always a contradiction to this old world. He crosses it at every point from the day that he's born again until he passes on to be with the Lord. He pulls against the current of the world forever going the other way. I like what another man said. He said, every stroke of the hammer said salvation to his house, but the echo whispered condemnation to the world. He prepared an ark to the saving of his house and he condemned the world. Their, their unbelief was revealed. And I say to you, when you're trusting God and they're laughing at you, you're revealing your faith by your trusting God and obeying Him, but they're revealing their disbelief by their mockery and their wickedness. There's the justification of his soul. The Bible said he became heir of righteousness, which was by faith. 
He's justified by believing God. And so is introduced an early example of the principle which prevails still in our gospel preaching that there is a righteousness, there is a justification which is by faith alone. Noah believed God and he inherited that righteousness. It speaks of the blessings of salvation which come to one who believed God. What did Hebrews 11, 6 say? He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now we understand that he had righteousness before he ever built the ark. He was a saved man. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself is the, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself is the gift of God, not of works, not of works. Not, no one saved by his work. He's saved by faith. But his faith went to work. Second Peter 2, 5 said he was a preacher of righteousness. Watch this. Because Noah, by simple faith, took God at his word. He became an heir of the righteousness which was by faith. And God justified Noah because of his faith in him. And this was the characterization of Noah's life. He made an impact. I'm saying this this morning. A real, active, vibrant faith in God is what will benefit your family the most. Daddy, leaving behind a a testimony of real faith in a real God will be more valuable to your family than any possession, any portfolio, any position, or any pedigree that you could ever afford to pass down to them. I'm saying this, finances, fortunes, fames, they all pale in comparison to faith when it comes to eternity. So may God help us to have a faith like Noah's and impact our families so that God can save them. You've got a desire to see your family saved? Are you saved? Daddy, are you saved? Do you know you're saved? If you know you're saved, you ought to make a commitment that you're going to be faithful. Faithful to God, faithful to the things of God, the church, the word of God, faithful to what God's called you to do, faithful to your family, so that you can have an impact on your family that when judgment comes, your family will have faith in the same God that you put your faith in. They see you and want what you've got. An impact of faith. Let's pray. Father, I pray, I pray you take, take the message this morning. Speak, speak to hearts and lives. lives. Help, Help us. us. Lord, Lord, I pray. pray. Lord, Lord, there's no, no doubt people, people here that you spoke, spoke their hearts. hearts. There may Maybe be someone, someone here today that's not saved. saved. They, they need to be saved, saved before it's everlasting too late. I, I pray, pray you help them. I pray, Lord, for the dads. That you bless them, them and help them. them. I, pray I pray, God, God you encourage and walk with you and be faithful. I pray, I pray God, God you help us today. Whatever may be need to be done here, according to your will, for your glory, do it, I pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's stand all across the auditorium, heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Some have already come. Some are coming. If you need to come, you mind the Lord. Maybe, maybe you're here today and you've never been saved. Can I just remind you today, if you've never been saved, God wants to save you. God wants to save you. Then maybe you're here today. Maybe you're a dad. And you say, I need to be a better dad. I need to be a, a, a man of faith. Maybe, maybe it's not that you got off, but maybe you just take the reminder, the encouragement. Be a man of faith and faithfulness. Maybe you're not even a dad. Maybe you're a lady. God's put in your heart about having a real faith that impacts those around you. Several have come. If you need to come, you might have God spoke to your heart. If you need to be saved, we'll take a Bible and show you how you can know for sure from the Word of God that you're saved. You might have Lord. Several have come. If you need to come, you come. Young person? Young person, are you saved? You just go to church. Or are you saved? You live for Jesus. You trust in God. <laughs> just play that little chorus. Y'all just see it. Y'all know what y'all see along. So I have decided to follow Jesus. Oh, you need to come.
go and decide to follow Jesus. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. Sing it now. The cross we 